Hi, everyone. Welcome to our student q and I'm joined tonight by several of our students, as well as our Associate Director of Admissions and our Dean of Community Net Life. Tonight is an open floor for you to ask any questions you have about Kent's Hill. I just ask that you ask them in the chat box, and Mrs. Reynolds and I will ask them to our students. To kick things off, I'm going to pass this over to Mrs. Reynolds. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you, and thank you for joining us from all over the world. I think it's really late where some of you are. Um, so we're really happy to have you. Thank you. So I wanted to start off my portion of the call by introducing our student guests with you. Um, so the first guest I'd like to introduce is Azriel. Can you wave, Az? Okay. And Azriel is a junior here at Kent's Hill. Um, a couple of the things that they like to do are robotics and theater. Um, and they are from central Illinois. Other hobbies include running, drawing, and music. And you'll get to hear a little bit more from Az um, a little bit later in the call. The next student I'd like to introduce is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. You can wave. <laughs> so Stephanie is a freshman. Um, she is joining us here at Kent's Hill from New Jersey as a boarding student. And a couple of the things that she's part of that you all might be interested in are the Black Student Union and the girls varsity basketball team. And she's also one of our tour guides. Uh, so thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. Um, we are expecting Alex. And Alex, I don't see um, Alex on here yet, but he just got off the basketball court. So I'm looking forward to introducing Alex to you all. Um, Alex is a senior. And he um, has participated in Model UN. He's also part of the tour guide program. He plays soccer and basketball and he runs track. So I'm hoping that um, you guys will get a chance to meet him. And we're also expecting another senior by the name of Noah. Um, and Noah is a hockey player and he also plays lacrosse and soccer and he is a senior. So we're looking forward to having him join us um, in a little while. Um, so before we hear from our students and get to the actual Q&A part, we thought it would be fun for you all to meet the Dean of Community Life, Erica Chute, Ms. Chute. And Erica really is the heart and soul of Kent's Hill School. She program does all of the programming for our weekends, and many of the special activities that we have here on the Hill. Um, she also teaches an art class and is a super creative member of our community and has been with us for a long time. So she's a great person for you all to get to know. And she'd like to tell you a little bit about what she does here at Kent's Hill and how you may get to know her if you become a student here. Hi everybody, it's really good to see you. Um, I like to call myself the Dean of Fun and think that I have the best job on campus because I get to work with all the students to come up with ideas uh, for our community to have fun and to engage with each other. And my role really looks at four main things on campus. And one would be the residential program. The second would be leadership opportunities. Um, another one would be clubs and activities. And a third one, or am I on four? I don't even know, um, would be weekend act. I already did week no weekend activities. And then I also have a part in the advisory program. So I'm just going to take a minute to go through all of those different components. Um, I was trying to think, what would you want to know about our residential life program? We have five dorms on campus, two for female identifying students and three for male identifying students. And all of the dorms have a kitchen or a refrigerator, a microwave, obviously bathrooms, and um, their age, they're divided by ages. So usually our ninth and 10th graders are mixed together and our 11th, 12th and postgraduate students are, are put in a dorm together or on a floor together. And another question that students often ask is, how do you figure out who my roommate should be? And so if you are a returning student, we have a housing lottery 
where we do it by seniority. So the seniors would go first, the rising seniors, the rising juniors would go next and so on and so forth. But for our new students, I send you all a survey and I ask you things about your habits of living. Do you like your room hot? Do you like your room cold? Are you extroverted, introverted? What do you like to do for activities? Um, and then I try and find somebody else, either a returning student or another new student who has the same habits of living and the same interests that you do. Um, another part of the, the residential program is all of the dorms have dorm parents in them. And so really the residents in the dorms are looked at as an extension of their families. So oftentimes they're making you food. I think Nunzi, what are you doing? Board games and movies this weekend in your dorm. And Miss Reynolds last weekend did a nacho extrava extravaganza and a hot chocolate night. Um, we're doing jewelry making in main hall this weekend, Stephanie. And so really we try and have some activity in at least one of the dorms on the weekends. Um, every dorm also has student leaders who are called proctors and those can be your go-to people if you have questions or problems and, and you're not sure if you wanna go to an adult. Um, they're also there to help um, do programming within the dorms and just be somebody who can be a leader and someone who can help you navigate the residential life program. Moving on to leadership, we have lots of leadership opportunities on campus and we are really trying to help you build leadership uh, in our Kent Hill community and then in our greater community. And so we have ones that uh, students apply for like the Proctor program or student council. Uh, or student ambassadors. And then we have other opportunities where students can develop clubs and they can be leaders of those clubs. Uh, we have clubs that we have every year. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of those are, such as tour guides and Model UN and Howl. Um, the Howl is a pretty cool new club and it was designed by students. And they, if you're, if you get a chance to watch one of our games online, how will are the students who are videotaping the game and, and doing commentary? Um, but then every year there will be new clubs that pop up and students will come to me and say, oh, I would really like to do a student engagement club. Can we do that? And so I'll work with the students to, to make that happen. Um, weekend activities and trips. Every weekend I try and um, find ways of getting students engaged off campus and on campus. So we have uh, the, the typical trips on the weekend. Lots of students want to go to Target or we have a marketplace that has a lot of different shops in it from American Eagle to the Asian Bowl. And um, we are not very far away from Freeport, Maine, which is an outlet shopping center and then Portland, Maine, which is a little bit larger city. So we try and take trips to those places every weekend or at least one of those every weekend. And then another thing I'm thinking of is Maine is such a beautiful state. There's so much to offer. And so I'm trying to find ways to get you out and experience Maine, whether it be canoeing trips or hiking trips in the fall um, to we take ski trips on the weekends up to Sugarloaf or Sunday River or Lost Valley. And then in the spring, we're trying to find other ways too to, to get out and see everything that this state has to offer. Every week I send out an email to students and I say, where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do? And I really try my hardest to make those trips happen for them. So what I love most about my job is that um, like I said before, I'm working with students. And so we're a team with each other and I'm listening to them and hopefully they're listening to me a little bit. And um, we're trying to, to find ways of making this a great community together. So I, do, I take lots of student input on everything that I do. Um, lastly, advisory, and then I will stop talking. The advisory program is one of my favorite programs here. And every faculty member has a group of advisees or a group of students who become sort of their family away from home. Um, Ms. Reynolds and I are matched up together and we have, do we have 10 or 12 now? 10? 
we have a lot of advisees. Normally the groups are about six, but we keep adding on students and recruiting. Um, but your advisor is, is the liaison between you um, and your home. So between the school and home. So the advisor is, is in touch with your family and updating them on all the great things you do and hopefully not the bad things that you do um, and answering any questions that they might have. We, in our advisory groups, we meet every week and then we sit together at our school meeting, um, but then advisors are taking their advisory groups off campus to go to dinner. We have dinners at our houses, Ms. Reynolds and I, um, our last advisee dinner, we asked them, what do you want us to make? Thinking like they don't get a home cooked meal very often. And they wanted us to make them ramen noodles and Annie's mac and cheese. Um, so I can do that. That's about the extent of my cooking. Um, so anyway, those are really the four big parts of, of my job. So I am gonna stop talking and give you a chance to ask questions of me or of the students on the call. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. So that gives you all sort of a, a starting place as far as some thinking about student life here at Kent's Hill. Um, I also thought that maybe we could start off by talking with Stephanie a little bit. So if any of you have been following us on social media, you'll notice that we've been having some great success with our girls basketball team. So Stephanie is one of the uh, girls on the team. So um, I thought maybe we'd start with hearing from you, Stephanie. What's it like to be on that team? Okay, so I I think I'm so lucky to like be here and play at the same time as like some of the players on our team this year. We have, I think all of our starters are seniors and they just like, their leadership is so um, amazing and like vital to the team, um, especially coming in as a freshman. I thought like, oh, I don't know anyone. Um, obviously, like I thought there would be a divide between like grades and age levels, but there clearly wasn't. The girls on my team were like the most welcoming people I've known ever. And they made me feel so good. And me and there's a couple other freshmen on the team. And we're so excited to like keep going next year um, with our team because we're excited to like lead and we're definitely following their example. Our coach, um, our coaches, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. McDonald, are so amazing, and um, they really put in a lot of like um, effort into making sure we're where we're supposed to be, and coaching us and making sure we're doing the right thing. And they're patient and they're not mean, so <laughs> I know that could be something um, people are afraid of in coaches, but we really have spectacular. Um, guides with them and I think like that's just a part of the reason why we had a lot of success because our team has such good like chemistry and we just work together so well and that's one thing that you know obviously our coaches are pushing for success but they're also pushing for um, you know community and that's why I think we work so well together. Awesome. Say while I'm thinking of it I worked with you through the admissions process, Stephanie. Can you tell us why you chose Kent Hill? Ooh, I think I chose Kent Hill because it was, it stuck out to me, I think. In my admissions process, I definitely um, looked at a lot of other schools, especially coming from New Jersey. I'm seven hours away from home. So this, like, obviously wasn't the first place I was looking to go to, but I honestly, Kent Hill really stuck with me, um, especially the persistence in um, contact. I, there was a lot of contact kept throughout the process, and I just felt like they were looking at me for my qualities and, like, what I could bring to the school, and so I felt very, like, special I don't know throughout that process and it really made me think about like wow um I think I could be a good part in this community and I think I had a lot to bring to the table so at the end of the day when I was looking at that the distance from my home didn't really compare to the experience I would have here we're so glad you picked us <laughs> thanks I'm glad I'm here <laughs> um so let's see I just want to remind everybody, if you have questions, feel free to put them into the chat. 
Um, and I think Nancy has a question for Az, right, Nans? Yes, I do. So as I know you're interested in robotics and it's a newer program here to Kent Hill and pretty exciting. So some of our guests tonight might be interested to hear about it. Would you mind talking about it? Right. So can you hear me? Sorry, my mic's been a little bit wonky. Um, I'm here representing some of the non-athletic activities in the afternoon. And one of them is robotics. I'm very passionate about it. I went in with some very um, mediocre math skills at best and some art skills. And essentially what this club does is catalyze these abilities and what I like to describe is upgrade it. So I've learned so many more day-to-day -day life useful skills such as coding. Like I've started coding. I would have never dreamed of that in the first place. And it is a new program. Um, it is competitive. It is a worldwide competition called First Robotics. Um, if you do win, we go to a very nice hotel in Houston. So we can always hope. But it, it, it just started up this year. Um, everyone in it is very passionate and very supportive because we're all going in with open minds, different varying levels of like knowledge on engineering, but we all help out each other. And it's, it's a way for a community to form without necessarily needing athletics in it. Um, so I highly recommend if you guys are even slightly interested. Um, I love it. You know, I found my community in it clearly, but. Thank you so much. Thanks, Az. So Stephanie, I have a question for you. Can you talk about what it is like to live with a roommate? Yes. Oh, I love that because I, oh, I was so nervous coming here. I was like, especially about my roommate situation because I knew absolutely nothing. And I didn't know if I had trust in the and I guess Miss Chu, since she's saying she's the one who put us together, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I would like be okay with my roommate or if it would click or how it would go. And I took the quiz or the form. And when I came here, I met my roommate and her name is Haley. She plays hockey for our girls varsity hockey team. And she's like the sweetest person I know. She's like, I bonded with her so well when I first got here. And it's, I mean, there's a lot of aspects to having a roommate. Obviously, you have to learn how to, like, keep your space, um, obviously, like, separate from theirs. But at the same time, you have to be um, nice to them and you see them all the time because you're sharing um, kind of what might have been a really, like, intimate part of your life before. So you just have to get into the mindset of, like, you know, this is the way it's going to be now. And you have to, like make sure your boundaries are clear with them, obviously, but I think you, you'll you probably have the best time. I know my roommate and I, like, I just, I love her so much, and definitely, if you're doubting the process, do not, because if you fill out the form, like, honestly, um, you're definitely going to get a really good match. Thanks, Stephanie. Noah, hello, welcome. So Noah is joining us. He just got off the ice from hockey practice and which is perfect timing for this question that just came in. Noah, can you talk a little bit about the hockey program? Looks like he's muted. He might have to go out and come back in. I wanted to, while we're waiting for Noah, I was wondering if we could ask Az the same question about why they chose Kent Hill. Do you remember Az? Um, right, so I came from a pretty small town, a very small community, um, not much diversity. Uh, and so I mainly chose Kent Hill for the diversity and for the community that it forms. Um, I I'll say that there's a lot of different culture mixes here and it was kind of a shock at first but I think it's really good to see and learn about all that kind of like different cultures from other people and your friends too um it would yeah it was definitely a shock for me but that that's like the main reason I wanted somewhere I could fit in and home was just not doing it for me it was a 12k person town it was not doing it for me but yeah I mean Thank you. Hi, Noah. 
Hey there, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good, just got off the ice? Yes, ma'am, we just uh, finished practice up. Uh, I was running a few minutes late, so I just had to scramble out of there. Thank you so much for making the time for us. Of course. So would you like to tell the crew a little bit about hockey? Uh, of course, yeah. So I've been with the program for two years now. Um, it's been a pretty, I'd say it's been one of the, like the staples in my Kinsale experience. Um, considering it was my main sport coming in, uh, I felt that like I'd find most of my friends in hockey. And what I found that is that um, they're really friends away from the ice. So I find myself studying um, in the library at night with hockey uh, teammates, going to lunch, dinner uh, with teammates, spending time on the weekends with them. Um, and I feel like the hockey team has been a great community for me to involve myself in Kent's Hill um, and also get involved in the other stuff in the community. Um, the hockey team, we also help out. Uh, like sometimes we helped out in the dish room. Uh, we do help out a lot with giving some tours and stuff around campus um, and getting involved on the weekends, um, setting up activities. So I would say um, if you're looking for a place to really involve yourself in like the NEPSAC sports world, but also find a place where you're going to learn to be, you know, a good leader and a good off ice um, person and a good person around campus. I'd say we have a, a stellar hockey program and we're continuing to build. Great, Noah. So uh, we asked the other, the other students on the call about why they chose Kent Hill. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to answer that question too. Do you remember? Yeah, of course. And I, I, I was joining late and I, I love some of the responses I was hearing. Um, I love Stephanie's response. Um, and I think like uh, when it came down to it at the end of the day, uh, for me, choosing Kent Hill was finding a place where I would be comfortable um, and finding a place where I felt like I would excel. And I feel like Kent Hill's um, done that really well for me. I, I felt really comfortable from day one and I've continued to try to grow and represent myself um, and build, build a reputation around campus. And I feel like um, when choosing a school, you really have to find a place where you get on the campus and you feel really involved. And I felt like the day from the day I stepped on until now, I felt I felt nothing but loved. And, um, you know, also there's also so much support here, I would say. So I say, like, as far as it come down to choosing schools, I would say everybody may be so welcome. And I feel like so much support at this place. Great. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. So we've got a great group of students joining us from all over the place. Um, do any of you have any questions for Noah or Az or Stephanie or Ms. Chute or um, Nunzi or I about the admissions process? We're here to, um, to share anything that you might want to ask. So go, go right ahead and you can put them in the chat or you can just pipe up and say them. I have a couple questions right here. Um, someone is wondering, what is a day of school normally like? Stephanie, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, oh, okay. So it definitely depends on what activity you're doing. Um, but normally um, in the morning, you would have classes start at 8.30. So to try to get to breakfast before then. Um, I get up at around 7.30 and then I go to breakfast at eight. And when I get to my first class, I'm all like ready. Um, it depends on, we have classes by, different schedules so on one day we'll have a set of classes and the next day we'll have a different one but after your classes you will normally go to your activity or your sport and that for me is basketball right now so I would go um, at, to practice and then afterwards you would have dinner or if you have a little bit of free time you can go and relax in your room um, and obviously get some studying and some work done and then after dinner you have a choice to go back to your room or you can go to a different spot on campus and that's kind of a little regular day at school. <laughs> Thank you Stephanie. Um, we're really excited because Alex is here and I know I mentioned earlier in the call that Alex was um, on the basketball court. So thank you, Alex, for making time for us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we're all waving. Um, so Alex, do you mind if I, if I ask you your question first? Are you okay to jump in with talking a little bit about how you balance academics and sports here at school? Yes, yes, totally. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, um, 
Alex Cephas. I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm a senior here at Kent Hill. Um, I'm on three varsity teams. So in the fall, I do varsity soccer, in the winter, varsity basketball, and in the spring track. And <clears throat> um, all of those take up a good amount of time, but I've learned how to balance that time between all these sports and schools. Um, my junior year, I got um, all A's in both semesters. So I did really work hard on how to balance that time. So what I do is, well, definitely in the nights after dinner and after all practice is over, I try to get my homework out of the way. And also I try to do a lot of work in my free periods because that's one thing here at Kent Hill. Like most likely if you're not, most there's a good possibility you're going to have free periods. And this year I have two free periods, which are on the same day. So like, if I know I'm going to have a game like three hours away or a game in the afternoon or something like that, or practice in general, I always make sure to do whatever work I can in those free periods. But essentially like, I just do work after practice. That's what I do. And, and it's not all the time like, oh, just work, work, work. Like there's all this time over the weekend where if I'm not on one of the amazing weekend trips that Miss Trude plans for us, <laughs> like if I'm not in Freeport or Portland or something like, and I'm on campus, like I'll sit down in the dining commons just doing homework before dinner or after dinner, I'll do some homework. But I also like spend a lot of my free time with my friends hanging out, playing games, just talking in general. So I've definitely found a great way on how to balance that. And so far it's been working, but one of the like best parts about being here, as I mentioned before, was the free periods. Like those free periods, like those are like a really great time to get work done because you're like in between classes. So you're already in that, work mode like that work mindset so I don't I try not to break myself out of it so I just like if I'm done with one class and I have a free period I go to the library and I'm still in that work mode so I just try to get that work done so that possibly in the night I won't have work to do and I can like go all out in practice without having to worry about being tired the next night um to do the work so and I've seen you do that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Even while you're while Alex is waiting to give a tour, he's often in my office doing schoolwork. So I think that's pretty amazing. Thank you, Alex, for um for sharing that with us. I yes. um we have so we have a freshman, a junior, and two seniors on the call. And I know that Noah really likes to talk about college counseling because that's something that he's really um, enjoyed having the support of here at Kent Hill. So Noah, do you want to start off talking about that? And then maybe um, maybe Alex and Az would also have something to add. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. So um, I came here as a repeat junior. Um, so all of my friends were kind of in that college process and going off to school. Um, and I started the process pretty early, uh, meeting with my college counselor. Uh, she was great in making sure that I was choosing schools that, um, you know, that might fit what I was trying to study, but also giving me suggestions on maybe schools that I hadn't looked at yet that I might want to, um, like, take a look at deeper. Um, and I would say the college counseling program here is uh, very supportive. Um, obviously, being away uh, from your parents, sometimes helping with that process, um, it's difficult to navigate it on your own. Um, so starting even far as sophomore or freshman year, um, college counselors are setting up events, workshops to make sure that you're staying on track. Um, and if college is for you, um, they're, you know, laying the roadmap to, to how to get how to be successful in that process. Um, I've tried to take full advantage of that. And I've tried to meet with my college counselor um, while I was going through the application process in the fall, at least once a week. Um, and she was great. Miss Tracy um, was able to sit down with me, go through colleges, um, show me how to complete the common app, um, write essays, get recommendations. So I would say the college counseling, um, I guess, program here is just a great resource um, that I recommend all students take advantage of um, if they want to, you know, kind of ease the process and ease the stress heading into like December and January of their senior year. Great. As you want to add something to that? Sure. Um, I'll say that the college counselor 
kind of acts as a mediator. So if you have different ideas than your parents, they will act as an advocate for you um, and for what you want, just so your parents don't maybe necessarily take over with their ideas that you may not necessarily want. They will also serve as like a realist, like, let's keep it real. Can you really go to Germany? You know, like they're going to keep you on track, but also make sure that your ideas don't get overshadowed, especially if you have trouble with like your parents with that kind of stuff. Great. That's really important, Ev. Thank you, because I know that does happen. Um, Alex, do you want to add anything to the college counseling conversation? Oh, yeah. Um, the college counselors here are great. So we have two, Miss Tracy and Miss Nanoff. No one had Miss Tracy, but I had Miss Nanoff. And it started, the process for me started way back in junior year. Like we went over a list of different colleges to go through, what I'm interested in. And the counselors recommended some schools. And then fast forward to senior year, like it's been really helpful. They keep you on track um, because they have this um, software system called SCORE where they can like keep a track of like, like if your recommendations are in your transcripts that what you're doing it through the whole process. So like, that's also a good thing of them keeping you on track. And as Noah said, they help you with the essays, getting recommendations. Um, they also like do a really good job in trying to bring various representatives from colleges in. So I know I've been to like three of the visits. They had a represent like most recent the one the last one I went to was one of the schools I applied to Bowdoin, um, or I don't know how you pronounce it properly, Bowdoin, Bowdoin. Um, they had an admissions representative from that school like come here talk to us. It was like a and you could just sign up. And when I went, it was like a five-on-one meeting. So there's five students and the one rep from Bowdoin. And I really got to learn so much more about the school because my counselors got a representative from um, that college to come here. And that's one of the colleges that I ended up applying to. And the person who came here, like Bowdoin's admissions representative, is the person that's going to be reading my application. So I also like, made sure I showed some demonstrated interest in that meeting. But that's also one of like the things I love about the concerts here, that they go all out and trying to get schools from all over to come um, and talk to you. A lot of times it's in person, but sometimes like it would be online. But it's still amazing being able to have that like conversation with representatives from that other school because I don't know how much other students across the country can say that they have access to something like that. So that's like something really great here. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate those responses, you guys. Thank you. Um, I wanted to shift gears a little bit and check in with Ms. Chute. Um, can you talk a little bit about travel opportunities to bigger cities nearby? We have a question about that. Um, and I know we just recently had a trip to Boston. Um, what would you like to share about that? Well, um, I think the, the best opportunities for trips to bigger cities would be our long weekends. And we have two long weekends during the year, one in the fall and one in the winter. So as Ms. Reynolds just said, we just sent a group to Boston yesterday for the day. Um, we have in the past done trips to New York uh, one of our art, our art teachers took a bunch of students to some of the museums in New York City. Um, we are about to have a March break, not that we're counting down the days until March break, um, <laughs> but we have a group of students going um, a little bit beyond some of our closer cities. Uh, there's a group going to Costa Rica and there's a group going to New Orleans. Um, the New Orleans group is a, is a pretty cool trip. It's a trip that's offered every year and they go, the students go down there with faculty members and they do some volunteer work um, rebuilding some of the houses that have been destroyed down there. Uh, so I would say that those are some of the bigger ones. I know that some of the, we've done some um, other trips during March break. We've gone to France and Spain, um, I'm trying to think where else we've gone. 
I can't remember off the top of my head, but we also have an exchange program. I'm kind of like diving off into another realm right now, but um, we have several students here from South Africa, and then we will send some of our students over there to South Africa. So the students here are came for the fall semester, and then we'll send some students over there for, for a little bit. And we've also had an exchange program with um, a school in England. And where, where was Australia? Yeah, we had a girl from Australia. That was pretty cool. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. I have one for you, Mrs. Reynolds. <laughs> I have applied, but haven't heard back yet. When will I find out if I'm accepted? Oh, that's a good question. So that's, this is a really exciting time for all of you. Um, because I think many of you have applied and um, are waiting to hear. So those decisions should mostly be made by mid-March if you've already applied. Um, as you know, we have rolling admissions. So the priority deadline for people applying for financial aid was January 15th. Um, so those dollars go quickly. So if you're interested in financial aid, it's really important that you complete your application and get it all the way through so we can consider it. Um, as soon as possible. Um, but Mar mid March will be, you know, the time where you should be getting a decision from us. Um, so I know it feels like a long wait, but it will be here before you know it. So um, thank you for all of your hard work on those applications, because I know it takes a lot of time. And it also takes us a fair amount of time to review those. So um, we're working on that as we speak. Thank you. Alex, I'm going to direct this question to you. The question is, what is it like living so far away from home? Okay, so as I've said before, I'm from Jamaica, but I also like go in between Jamaica and Miami. So I call both those places homes like really far down south. Um, but for me, like I've adjusted really well because of like how well like ran like the experience and campus is here. So um there's all these people around my advisors are always there they're like second parents um I know usually like let's say if I'm in Jamaica and I need to like go off camp like go on the road to get something I'd ask my mom like hey mom could you bring me to this place I need to pick up something but like recently I had prom like a few months ago and I needed to get my suit but there's no weekend trips or anything like to go where I was going and I asked my advisor, Miss Reynolds, she's in this chat here, um, to like, if she could take me to go get my suit, which she did, like, she took me to men's warehouse, like 30 minutes away. And then she also like, took me to go get um, some food afterwards, and then brought me back on campus. So the people here have like, made it really, like, have made it a really easy process for me to adjust, like being away from family and all that. And then the student body here, because we have a smaller student body, it's really close. So it's kind of like one big family. So I know a lot of times, like, if there's a certain group of people that I usually eat lunch with and they're not there, like, I know that, like, I can always sit with someone else because, like, everybody knows everyone. And so, like, just the whole community here, that's been um, really good. And um, back home, I'm usually out a lot on the road with my friends, like going all over. But um, here, um, our student life team, they've made it like, they've tried their best, like giving us off campus options, especially like on the weekends, like there's a trip to the different plazas and malls, you can go to Walmart, the main mall, like we can like, I've taken trips quite possibly everywhere, like with Kensil, like the Kensil bus has taken me down to Portland to go to the mall. It's taken me to the marketplace. I went and got sushi with my friends or go to Walmart. And just yesterday, like I went to Boston and that Boston trip Miss Chu was talking about and school paid for my train pass. They paid like for an all day train pass and they gave me meal money. So like the community here is really good, tight knit. 
the faculty here, the advisory program, great. They're like your second parents. You can always go to them for help. And also my advisor, I had an SAT exam off campus at like 8 a.m. in the morning. Again, my advisor took me. She picked me up at 6.45 and took me there. Um, and then, yeah, it's the community, the advisors, the um, resources to take, of us, to take us off campus to different trips. So it, it doesn't feel like I never really get that feeling like, oh, if I was home, I could be doing this or that. Like, there's just always something here. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his advisors are both here. That's, I love them. Apparently, I need to step up my game, Alex. Ms. Reynolds is <laughs> doing more. No, no, than no, I, am. No, no. I didn't make you ramen, though. I did make ramen in, in my Yeah, house. it was really good. Noah, I have a question for you. And they ask, what is a hockey player schedule? I think maybe talking about like a travel schedule, not some like what's your program schedule like? Maybe training, preseason, anything like that. And then throughout the season, what what is that like? Uh yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I really think it starts um kind of preparing yourself to come to school. Um, as a player who had aspirations um and ended up playing on the varsity team. Uh, I felt like, you know, my preparation started in the summer, just making sure coming to campus and, and the first day on campus, um, taking it all in, but but really getting to know the guys who are, you know, perspective for the team. Um, I think the first night I arrived on campus uh, last year in my junior year, uh, we were on the ice within two hours of me, you know, setting up my dorm room. So um, it's a really good community, I would say, as far as um, preseason training, uh, you know, you kind of designate that you would like to to try out for the varsity team and you start going through um, morning skates. Um, usually, I'd say in the fall, we have like a morning skate once or twice before school. Um, it would start, you know, before classes, um, but you kind of balance that in school. And then when you get into the season, uh, usually you'll have a game um, on a Wednesday or a Friday and Saturday. Um, and if it's a home game, um, you're kind of preparing throughout the week um, with practice plans. Uh, we do actually have a um, off ice uh, strength program. So um, kind of going through that, making sure you're, you're keeping your body right. Um, we have a great uh, dining commons and a lot of great food options. So making sure you're fueling your body as well as um, athletic training. Um, if any injuries or injury prevention um, is something that, that you want to you know, get involved in. Um, and then I'd say as far as travel goes, um, you know, I, I think Kensil was the first uh program that introduced me to, to kind of how it would feel like to be in a college environment or a professional environment. Um, we, you know, wear professional attire to games, um, get on the bus. We coach bus to games over two and a half hours away, three hours away. Um, you know, you're, you're sitting with your friends, you're, you're going there preparing and it's a tough schedule. So we play a lot of um, teams. We play in the whole conference. So that's teams like Berwick, uh, Hebron, NYA, um, those teams. And then we also play a really tough NEPSAC schedule. So we'll play like Dexter Southfield and, and guys that, you know, you might see in the NHL in like one or two years, definitely guys you'll, you'll see playing college. So I would say the, the hockey program and preparing yourself like a professional or like a college player is something that really stood out to me and was something that, you know, as a, as a kid who grew up playing hockey in the South was such a fun and welcoming um, environment and something that I really try to take advantage of. And I feel like um, if you do have aspirations to play after prep um, and play in juniors or playing college, um, definitely the this is the recruiting platform. And if, if, if you'd like to, to make connections and make meaningful ones and really work hard, or if you'd like to take, um, you know, hockey, a different approach and, and have fun and, and, and play on different recreational teams. I think this, this has, you know, the, the kind of all in all in one package. We have a great, uh, Alphon Athletic Center that has all the resources, you know, to you. And we have great coaching staff and, and great support outside. So I would say um, as far as, you know, a professional and, non, and non-professional environment at the JV level, I think Kensal Hockey kind of has it all. Thank you, Noah. And I have <laughs> another question here asking if we offer a dance team. Ms. Shoot, do you want to talk about <laughs> Yeah, we do not this year have a have a dance team. Um, we have throughout the years, depending on interest, we've had a dance club 
and they have done performances. Um, it's we've had faculty members who have organized the club, and we've also have have had students who organize the club. So we've we've been all over the place with dance, and it really just depends on the student interest. But as far as a competitive team, we do not have a competitive team at school. Thank you. And just because you just kind of touched on it about student interests and clubs happening, do you want to talk a little bit about how clubs are formed? Absolutely. Um, so clubs, as I mentioned before, there are clubs that we have every year. Um, we, we just carry them from year to year. And those for the most part have faculty members who have done them for a while. But then we also each year have students who come and have a different idea for a club. Um, and so what I do is work with that student to try and find a faculty advisor. We talk about budget. What do you need for your club? Um, how much money do you think you're, you'll need? And is that reasonable? How much money you've asked for? And then we talk about sort of what the purpose of the club would be and um, and what being in that club might entail. So I'm trying to think of, um, there was a creative writing club that was a new one this year. Um, uh, the An Asian student union, um, they hosted our Lunar New Year. That was a new club this year. Um, there's a girl who, who has come to me and we're trying to put together a, a student engagement club. So we have both been in contact with the local community to try and find places to go out into the community and help them. So I'm willing to look into any club within reason. Um, I've even, we, we even had, gosh, two years ago, it was a magic card club. I don't even know. I, I didn't even know what those were. But, um, and are you laughing? I'd bought magic cards and I tried to learn magic, um, but I think I got kicked out of the club and there were a group of students who, who continued doing that. And as isn't there like an informal little puzzling club. Um, so we've kind of dumped puzzles <laughs> on that table. So if you can dream it, we try and make it happen. Do any of the students that are on want to Say a club that you're part of. I know there was a new grilling club this year, if I remember correctly. Um, but as Stephanie, Alex, or Noah, do you know of any other ones you want to share? Oh yeah, I was going to talk about the grilling club. Um, one of my closest friends here, um, Daniel Glazer. Like this guy, he he loves like his grilled food. He's from the south. He loves his ribs, his steak, his hot dogs, and he always like complained about like not being able to eat so much of it. So he was like, he just like one day talked to some teachers and started the grilling club. And um, he got one, a faculty member to be um, his advisor for the club. And um, over the fall, one day last year, he had like a big barbecue with burgers, hot dogs, drinks. Um, we had ax throwing, like it was like an actual like, like it just felt like an actual southern barbecue like and I've never heard of a grilling club before but like as Miss Truth said you can if it's reasonable you can do it so all these guys and girls were out there flipping patties sausages and all that stuff I am laughing because that is a perfect example of where Daniel wanted to start a club and he wanted to get filet mignon for the school <laughs> So we were like, let's style that back a, a bit. Um, but yeah, that was a fun time. As I saw you raise your hand and then we'll go to Stephanie. Hold on. Um, so I'll add that we have a GSA uh, student union here. Um, we, at Kins Hill is a very welcoming place for if you identify on the LGBTQ spectrum at all. Um, and along with this club where you can go connect with people in the community, in the Kent's Hole community. Uh, we also work with Out Maine, um, which is this large Maine program where you can meet and talk on Zoom with people and mainly teenagers from different high schools in Maine. Um, there's also opportunities to get off campus with this kind of stuff. So I went to like an art program with a couple other kids here over the weekend. It was a sleepaway camp, but it was like, it was specifically for queer kids. So if you guys are wondering about like 
the acceptance here it is very very accepting we even have a club for it so just advocate for what you want I've got I have two clubs I want to talk about um I'm a part of multiple but I think I should call attention to the model UN group which I'm a part of and then also the collective which is a female affinity group on campus um in model UN we're just starting out um definitely helps me to learn a lot about um being like professional and using correct like language to address things that involve um international relations and it's definitely really fun to learn about other countries and their issues and talk about and like discuss with other countries about how we can resolve those issues and then in the collective it's definitely just like a good female energy space um we had our first meeting I think last week and it was really it was really fun just to connect with a bunch of girls across um campus and I think one of my best friends um she's a day student Sam she's really I think actually I should call attention also to if you're coming um from near Maine and if you're coming to school um I think that like you would probably want to know about the day student and border divide which there actually is none spoiler alert um I have really good day student friends and I think that there is not really a big difference because like I said our community is so welcoming but back to the collective it's really um it's a good group to join if you like you know that girl energy <laughs> awesome that was fantastic thank you all so much for that we're so proud of our students and um Thank you to all of you for joining us from all over. Um, I don't know if you want to say where you're from, but I know that some people it's like midnight where you are. Um, so thank you so much for joining and feel free to reach out to your admissions representative and we can connect you with any of these students offline. If you have a question that you want to ask or something you think of later, we can certainly connect you. Anybody want to say anything else? Great. Thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.